Well, good morning, church. It's so good to have you here with us today. You know, to be honest, I am so very pumped about this morning. I've got something on my heart that I want to share with all campuses, so we're going uh, right across the nation with this. But of course, I want to welcome all our international pastors. It's just so good to have you here with us today. You know, we've got pastors here from Tonga, Mexico, United States, Canada, India, Philippines, and for the first time, South Africa. And so I want to welcome you all here today. Uh, come on, church, let's give them a big hand, a big applause right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful, Jesus. You know, Summit is only one week away. In actual fact, it's less than a week away. It actually starts this Wednesday night, which is pretty incredible. And uh, I am so looking forward to having Pastor Cash. I've got to know him over the uh, past few years, and he's such a wonderful, wonderful man, man of God, a man of faith man of the Spirit. I know he's going to inspire the church. I know he's going to impart to the church. Uh, he's going to bless the church. And of course, Pastor Darius, no stranger to us, was here with us last year. And so Summit begins on Wednesday, Wednesday night. Please don't miss any of these sessions, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. And of course, it's really only two days, Thursday and Friday afternoon. You can take time off and you can get there to those daytime sessions. They're up close and personal. And, uh, you know, you get to hear things that you won't get to hear on, on night sessions. And so really encourage you to be here for that. I am so looking forward to having my dear friends with us again. And not only that, but of course, uh, just getting together with everybody. Many pastors will be coming from all over the place and many other Christians as well. But invite your friends, invite your family, and make sure people come out. Let's pack the place out uh, on opening night on Wednesday night and make it the great conference that we know it is. So Summit 2018, very, very cool. Well, this morning I've got something great to share, as I mentioned. And uh, tonight, of course, is a, a worship night here on the North Shore. Uh, and I know that uh, Pastor Krista has something special in mind just to set, set the atmosphere uh, for some. It's going to be so good. And uh, so I'm, I'm just so blessed. So blessed to have a great team that's been putting Summit together. I really appreciate that. I'm going to let you know in a moment what I've been up to while everybody else has been working hard, putting Summit together. And I just so appreciate everybody and all that they've done to make Summit happen once again. And can I say thank you again, church, also for your contribution towards Summit, uh, even financially to make it happen. Without you, it wouldn't happen. It couldn't happen. I so appreciate it. So I'm going to pray. I want to ask God's blessing on this word that I'm going to deliver to you today. And I know that it will inspire your life and it will get you ready for Summit. So Father, we thank you today for the word of God. I thank you, Father, for every pastor that's under the sound of my voice, and even those watching on live stream. Father, I bless them and I pray for them. Pray that, Lord, you would touch, Lord, this message today. And Lord, it would burn in our hearts, burn in our spirits, that we would, Father, grow a little bit more into your likeness. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. I thank you, Father, for the uh, summit time that we will have together at the top of the mountain. Uh, Lord, learning and uh, gleaning and growing. We thank you, Lord, that we're Jesus. You took your disciples up the mountain and you sat down and you said, blessed are you. And I pray blessing, blessing over every person. Lord, not only in this place today, but uh, Father, tonight and on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we just commit ourselves to you. We bless Pastor Darius and Pastor Cash. We pray for them as they arrive in our country, that Lord, that arrive on fire on an assignment from God. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, give me a big shout out there at Mount Wellington. Come on, South Island. Hallelujah. All right, well, let's get straight into the scriptures this morning. John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. Everybody say that word with me, life. Come on, you can say it louder than that, life. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words, words, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Can I read that again? I really want you to get the scripture. John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. Jesus speaking. Let's go to John chapter 10. We're nearly through, but I hope you're enjoying this, and I hope you're getting something out of it, and I hope you're preparing yourself and praying up for Summit 2018. 
Truly, truly, Jesus speaking, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he's a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Listen, the sheep hear his voice. Listen, the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. He leads them out. When he puts forth all his own sheep, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but they will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things which were he had been saying to them. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. Go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief comes, the thief, the discourager comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they might have what? What? Life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus is saying, know my voice. The thief, the serpent of old, he comes to rob, kill, and destroy. We've been talking about that so much lately. But I have come to bring you life. Now let's go to John chapter 6. This is where it gets excited. Exciting. John chapter 6, man, I'm pretty pumped. I think I might have to have a bit of, bit of pump water right here. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. So good. So thirsty. So hot in here. Just joking. Number one. Mm. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you Look, 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 please look. Everybody look at this. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. The words I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. But some of you, <laughs> there are some of you who do not believe. You know, to be honest, church, and let me be honest, obviously as a preacher, <laughs> um, we're not set free to do what we want. We're set free to do what he wants, what he asks. A lot of people think, you know, well, I found freedom in Christ and I can just live my own life, do what I want, but it's not true. See, God is the original author. He wrote your story. In fact, he wrote it before you were born. He wrote it before the foundation of the world. Think about that. And if your enemy has come in, and he did in my life at one particular point in time, and I can recall those days many years ago. Some of you have seen some photos. And I know he did it with a lot of other people too. And the enemy comes in and tries to scribble out what God has written for you. You know, to be honest, I have to say, uh, you know, when I gave my life to the Lord as a 12-year-old boy, if I had stayed faithful to him, I know I would, you know, the saddest words are what might have been, what might have been. And uh, even though I can't go back and change that, and God has forgiven me, I know, but the thing is, is that the enemy came in and tried to rewrite my story. He tried to take me down a different path. He tried to rewrite what God had destined for me. God called me before the foundation of the world to preach the gospel, and I knew that when I stood as a 12-year-old boy and gave my life to Christ. But you know, the devil had a stronghold and whispered other things. Well, you're just a kid from Taranaki. You couldn't speak to you at seven. Your dad just died. So who do you think you are? You dropped out of school at 15. I mean, you know, now it goes on. 40 jobs by the time I was 20. I'm, you know, and, and all the other things. And The devil tries to scribble out what God wrote for me. But hallelujah, Jesus blots out what the devil writes. He doesn't just scribble out. I said, Jesus blots it out on the cross. Oh, man, I could just sense his presence. Jesus blots out all your sin, all your failings, all your mistakes. Hallelujah. And you know, then God can rewrite what he wrote in the first place for you. Let's go to Psalm 139. I'm nearly through, but I hope and pray you're getting prepared for summit. Psalm 139, I will give you thanks. I will give thanks to you. 
It's a psalmist talking to God. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, let's be honest. I'm looking around. There's no perfect image people in the sense of, you know, perfect weight, the perfect looks, the perfect size ears. You know, everything's good, you know. In your eyes, when you look in the mirror, you may not see it, but God does. God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. And wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden. See, God doesn't make junk. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret, skillfully wrought in the depths of, you, of, the, of the earth, your eyes have seen my unformed substance. You know, talking about DNA and that, in the Scripture it talks about being knitted together. and That's what DNA talks about, be the knitting of it. You know, God has it all sorted. Love to talk more, but your eyes have seen my unformed substance. Look at it now. And in your book, they were all written. The days that were ordained for me. God has written your life. He wrote my life. He wrote all my days. All my days that were ordained for me, that God has got for me, that the devil cannot rob me of one day. You know my story in Panama. You know my story that I was destined by God to live. If I wasn't, friend, they would have probably buried me in Panama. I don't know. But the thing is, is that, you know, all in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there is not one of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. All the days written when there was not one of them. So the thing is, friend, you cannot just sneak into the earth. You've got to be written into the story. <laughs> oh, come on. I need some people in here just to, to hear me now, right now. Come on. Listen, you cannot sneak into the earth. You've got to be written into the story. I got written in this, into the story. Okay, I could talk about my birthday, 10th of the 12th, 1950. That's when I came forth on the planet. But hey, my book was written before I was born, even before I was a twinkle in my father's eye, even before I was conceived. I was written before the foundation of the earth. God saw me, hallelujah, and he wrote out my life. And so the devil tries to rob, he tried to rob me. Listen now. He tried to rob me as a 12-year-old boy, even though God had destined me to be a preacher. And even though he had some victories, he didn't have the final victory because God, hallelujah, came back into my life. And I know the same story is for you in many ways. But you know, when I was in Panama and, and uh, had that massive heart attack, Incredible. I, I, I still, to this day, honestly, I can honestly say I did not know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening. But I knew it was serious, and that's why I did a goodbye video to Bev and a goodbye video to the kids and to the church, because I knew something serious was, was wrong. And as it happened, as you know the story, when I got back to New Zealand, eight days later, I had 100% blockage in my LAD. Comes up on the screen just to show you a, a, a picture of that of a scan, and so 100% blockage. Now, you can Google uh, having a blockage in an LAD. It's called the widow maker, the widow maker, because you have 8 to 20 minutes to live, 8 to 20 minutes, 8 to 20 minutes. And so the devil, he tried to take me out. He tried, but God had another plan, kept me alive. And as you know, I had to fly home through Tahiti. And I was maybe foolish, foolish enough to go jet skiing in Tahiti because I thought, well, you know, might as well enjoy my last moment, I guess. But I knew if I fell off that jet ski, I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble because I didn't have the strength to swim. I could hardly walk 20 feet. And so the thing was, was that here I was in Tahiti. Well, guess where I am today? I'm back in Tahiti. I know, I know South Island. You think I'm on the North Shore. <laughs> I know Mount Wellington. You think I hear I'm on the North Shore. Yes, this was recorded on the North Shore, but I'm actually in Tahiti right now, which is incredible, isn't it? 
And I'll tell you why I'm in Tahiti right now. And I've often said, you know, the opportunity of a lifetime only exists in the lifetime of that opportunity. And as you know, and as I often talk about how God has blessed my life so incredibly with so many rich relationships right around the world. The two guys that are coming for, for Summit, Pastor Cash and Pastor Darius, you know, and, and many other people, Pastor Samuel and others, God's just enriched my lives with the fellowships of all these international pastors that are here today. And God has enriched Bev and I in life, and we've been so blessed. And I am so grateful, no two ways about that. And as you know, it was uh, only a, a, year, a year or two back that, Lord Bob and Lady Tracy invited us on our boat and co- on their boat, sorry, my boat, their boat in Costa Rica. And uh, I shared that with you openly. And, and uh, you know, it was just such a blessed time, man. It was a memory, it was like, it was like a, 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 an opportunity of a lifetime. No two ways about that. Uh, it was one of our obviously great, greatest experiences. Who gets to experience that? I'd, I'd love to talk to you more, but I know it's going to make you jealous. I know it's going to make you envious. And I know a lot of you would get upset about it. So I can't talk about too much how some people live on the planet, but enough to say it was just an incredible experience. And I'm sure if you had the same experience, you'd take it up as well. Well, you got to remember last time I was in Tahiti, I was dying, but I didn't know it. I couldn't even walk off the plane when I got back to New Zealand. I got taken in an ambulance to the North Shore Hospital. You know that, and got a uh, stent put in. And, and by the grace of God, I'm here today because my days were not up. My days weren't up. And so in any case, uh, Lord Bob and Lady Tracy, just out of the blue, wrote to me again. And they said to me, would you like to come to Tahiti with us on our boat again? <laughs> I mean, I was happy with one time, I have to confess. I mean, for me, a kid from Taranaki, wow. But you know, opportunity of a lifetime, and it exists in the lifetime of that opportunity. I looked at the date, and I saw summit on my calendar. I thought, oh, no, how can I make this work? You would too. And enough to say that I work with them, they work with me, and and, uh, sadly, i got to get off the boat a couple of days earlier to get home. So I'm giving up three days. You possibly wouldn't have even done that, you naughty people. Yes, you would, wouldn't you? So I'm giving up three days on a luxury cruise all laid on in Tahiti to get back. And time for summit, I'll be landing on Tuesday here in New Zealand, ready to go for summit. But right now, I'm sunning myself up in Tahiti, eating the luxury of the land. So please forgive me. Just put, pray for me. I don't feel any prayers coming my way right now. I know you love me. And I know that you'd be very happy for me and Bev. And, and so I appreciate it very much. And, and uh, you know, it's just the blessing of God and, and just so, so blessed. But I, I think it's significant too, very significant, that I'd go back to Tahiti at this particular point of time of my life. Because, you know, you don't know what other people are facing right now. You don't know what's going on in the world. And the thing is, I believe that God has opened the door for a specific reason, because my days are not yet finished. And so I want to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And it says here in your book, we're written, we're written the days that were ordained for me, when there's not yet one of them, all the days that are written. And so God has written my book. The devil can't steal it. He tried to steal it. He's tried to steal it a few times, not just as a 12-year-old boy, not just in Panama, but, but in other times as well. He's tried to steal it. Tried to steal my marriage a couple of times. Has he ever tried to steal something from you? He's tried to steal off me financially and all kinds of things. But the devil, he might read your story, friend. He might even scribble on your story. He might even try to write your story. But I believe there's a voice that's louder than his voice. This is a voice that says, come up here and I will show you. Come up here and I will show you. And as we come up to some of this week, as we come up and go up to another level this week, as I get back into New Zealand, I'm going to be sitting on the front row and I've got to pray and I've got to hope and pray for good weather to get back. But enough to say, I'm going to be open to the voice of God. I want to hear God's voice speak again to me because God's voice is the key of miracles. See, God's voice will always call you to more. Will always say, come up here. It's a voice that speaks before you and I will show you. You know, as I close this morning and I want to thank you and I hope and pray you still love me and, and, and pray for me just because I'm in Tahiti and you're, you're I hope it's not raining, but enough to say, uh, friend, please hear me. Hey, um, you know, 
like the woman caught in adultery. She was brought in and cast before Jesus. You know, Pastor Gary was telling me, Peter, never be ashamed of the blessing of God. And uh, as I said, I, I have been blessed. And you're a blessing. You're, you're a great blessing to us. And, you know, but I know people misunderstand it too when God blesses your life. And, you know, pe- especially small-minded people, they can't get a handle on it. God, God owns a whole universe. It's incredible. And, and the woman who is caught in adultery, listen as I close. She is brought and cast down before Jesus. And, and, and Jesus wrote in the dust. I remember preaching on this once. He wrote it in the dust. And um, <laughs> theologians have tried to figure out what he is writing. I mean, some, some, because he said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. A lot of people think that he was writing sins in the dust. Maybe he was, you know, and all of them would have felt guilty. I remember preaching once. I believe he was writing their names in the dust because he said it says his names are written on the palm of his hand and and uh, you know but but he could have been writing a whole new chapter of life for her right there before their very eyes you know that woman you think about your life think about adam and eve now think about adam and eve hiding you see this woman was brought in naked but jesus covered her shame she was brought and cast down but she left standing upright She was brought in sin, but she left in mercy. She was brought in before Jesus broken, but she left whole. And because of the words, because of the words of Jesus that brought her life, when he said, where are those who condemn you? What did she answer? Where are those who condemns you? And she replied correctly, no one, Lord. Listen now, no one, Lord. No one. How did she know that Jesus was not going to condemn her? How did she know that the judge, the lamb, the lion, how did she know that he wasn't going to say something to her? How does she know that? Well, was it what he was writing in the ground? Did he rewrite a new chapter, a new story for her life and scribble out the life that she was living, the life that the devil tried to rob her from? Because she replies correctly, even with Jesus standing there and the judge of all judges, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, she said, no one, Lord. You see, the lamb that was slain since the foundation of the world became her covering for sin and shame. I mean, friend, do you want me to mention the lamb that was slain for Adam? Whether it was a lamb, whether it was an apple, it was an animal that was slain. But Jesus said to her, woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I close with John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him, through him. Voices, voices. What voices are you listening to? What voices will you listen to this coming week? You have an opportunity to position yourself to hear the voice of God. I believe this morning, as I've been speaking on the screen right in front of you, I believe you have an opportunity right now to still your heart and hear the voice of God. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, but open it up and God will rewrite your life. His words are life to you. They produce life. They produce light. Hear the voice of God. Don't listen to the discourager. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the small-minded people. Don't listen to all the negative. Listen to what God says about you, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and He's got a destiny for every one of you. He has a plan for you, plans for good and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. And so I hope and pray today, friend, that you'll be in prayer for Summit, that you will be... (laughs) on your front foot at Summit, and I'll see you then. So I'm going to sign off from the South Island, sign off from Mount Wellington, and here on the North Shore, 
as wonderful people come and pick the service back up. I pray God's richest blessing upon you. And I thank you so much for allowing me to be your pastor. Amen.